Hey everybody, welcome back to Plastic Weekly. This week, I'm taking a quick look at that phrase that always comes up every time some little kid wins a World Cup. We're all, you know, all of us old people are saying like, man, these climbers just keep getting younger, right? Um, so with the help of some folks in the Plastic Weekly Discord, especially uh, Nate, so thanks Nate for the help with this, we compiled a bunch of the old data uh, and I've been playing around with kind of the average ages, putting it in some graphs that make it a little bit easier to look at, uh, specifically from 2007, which is when the IFSC officially kind of splintered off from the UIAA. It's kind of a nice clean point to measure from because the data gets kind of weird before that. Um, so we're just going to look at some graphs today and look at how the age of the competitors in our sport, the winners and the finalists have changed over the last 14-ish years. So let's go into the graphs. And I'm just going to explain some stuff about them first. Uh, let's fire this up. First graph on the screen is uh, for the Men's Speed World Cups and World Championships from 2007 to 2019. Really quickly on the left-hand side, the y-axis of the graphs is just the average age. Uh, all of these graphs will have the same um, y-axis. So at the very bottom is 16 years old, at the very top is 36 years old. And then chronologically from left to right, you have the World Cup events from 2007 to uh, 2019. The triangles, in this case green for the men, are the average age of the winner of that event. Um, the blue squares and the associated blue trend line is for the top eight. That's the average age of the top eight or in the other disciplines, the finalists. Uh, and then the purple uh, diamonds, that is the uh, average age of the field in general. So all of the competitors at that event. And again, uh, purple trend line for that. Those trend lines are a rolling average over the last seven events. Uh, so it gives you kind of an easier line to follow of how things are evolving. A couple caveats about the data. First of all, there could be some errors in the data. Uh, there was one athlete in the old info who had a birth date listed from the 11th century, swear to God. Um, now that was easy for me to notice because that was ridiculous. But if somebody was listed as being born in 1984, but they were actually born in 1987, I probably didn't catch that. So there's certainly a chance of some errors in the raw data. Um, secondly, I've done a lot of rounding in this data. Um, the IFSC only reports the birth year of an athlete. So if you were born in 2001, I'm going to call you 20 years old today, whether or not you were born at the start of the year or the end of the year. That's how the IFSC assigns age groups and youth climbing anyway, so I think you'll understand that. Um, but I've done the same thing with the dates of competitions. Um, I've organized them chronologically on the graph, as you can show, uh, but I don't haven't changed the age depending on when in the year the event was. So basically all of the events in one year were just kind of considered to be approximately the same uh, date. The last thing, and this is just for the speed graphs, and I fixed it for later on, is that with the speed graphs, I rounded all the numbers to a whole number. So you'll see all of the dots on this graph are exactly 20 or exactly 21 or exactly 22. I regret that. I didn't do it for the lead in bouldering. I thought it would make it look better. It doesn't really, and it kind of kind of flubs the data for no particular reason. So take the speed graphs with a grain of salt, although they are still approximately accurate. So let's take a look at what we're actually looking at and just talk about if we can see any patterns. So for the Men's Speed World Cup that we're looking at right now, let's start off from, uh, you know, at the very bottom left, you've got this 18-year-old in 2007. That's a Chizen, uh, or Chizen Zong uh, from China back when he was 18, winning that world championship in 2007. Um, if you go all the way up to the very uh, uh, top right of the graph, you see some much older athletes, and that's Basa Mawam from the last couple seasons when he was 34 and 35. Uh, really big age difference in, in some of the winners since 2007. In terms of trend lines, the overall field, which is listed in purple, it kind of goes up and down a little bit. But in general, especially over the last couple of years, the average competitor has been approximately 23 years old. Um, interestingly for the men, though, it's been a little bit higher, especially since around 2014. In general, if you've made it to the top eight, you're a little bit older than the field in general. For women's speed, things are a bit younger. And that's a pretty consistent pattern once you get within each discipline. The women are generally younger than the men on average. Starting off at the beginning of this, you should be aware that before 2013, some Speed World Cups were using the current 
speed wall system that you're aware of, but some of them still used old classic speed walls, which were different from World Cup stop to World Cup stop. Um, you know, nowadays you're used to times finishing in the five or six or seven seconds. Back then you could get into the tens or the twenties even. Um, and so it was a really different generation of speed climbing. And you can kind of see in that earlier generation, there is a very big break in the ages. So early on, you've got names like Tatiana Ruiga, uh, Edita Ropek, or Alina Riepko, all in that pre-homologated era, getting up into the 30, 32, 33 year uh, age range for the winners. Those are the yellow triangles in this case towards the start of the graph. But once we get into the homologated era, that kind of fades away and the distribution of winners really tightens up. Um, recent winners, you know, you're looking at the the um, Yiling song down in the very far right, um, but then also the Miroslavs, the Jobers, um, and the Reheus. And those athletes uh, really started climbing in around 2013. So if we look kind of in this zone, these climbers are the same ones, these winners, these yellow triangles are the same people that you're seeing win up here. So this kind of line is those, uh, those same athletes. Um, for the trend lines, the field has gotten younger if you, you know, especially if you include this pre-homologated era, uh, but it stayed relatively level at around 22, 23, that red line. Um, the top eight has fluctuated up and down quite a bit more, but in general, let's say it's in that 22 to 24 range, but not really any proof of like a major drop off over the long term when it comes to speed ages. Let's look at a bouldering. We'll do uh, some men's bouldering. And this is uh, really interesting, just seeing how consistent the inconsistency of the winner's age is when it comes to men's bouldering. Um, let's start with youngsters. In the bottom left, you've got your David Lamas here in uh, 2008. Your Adam Andres down here in his early bouldering wins. And then uh, um, uh, Zhang Wan Shang here in 2015. Kai Harada here in 2019. And then when you look at the older athletes, Andrew Earl, and again, these were like some really poorly attended World Cups. I think this was La Reunion, the little island off the coast of Africa, like maybe 20 athletes. I can't remember, but probably like 10 to 20 athletes here. Andrew Earl at 31. Um, I think this is uh, Stefan Julian. And then you've got your Killian Fishhuber's little era here. And out here, Gabriel Maroney, his win in 2018. Um, the trend lines when it comes to men's bouldering, again, small fields and expensive travel in the early years made it really volatile down here. Uh, and the finalists are really kind of all over the place. The finalists, again, in blue, you have them going up and then down and all over, still approximately in that like 24 to 26 range. Um, but the participants have actually steadily declined. So if you look at that purple line, it steadily declined from the 25-ish average down to below 24. So you might be able to make an argument that the field in men's bouldering has declined in average age over the last seven-ish years, that purple line there. For women's bouldering, this is where you start to see an argument for age not really mattering as much if you're one of the best. So specifically, these winners out here, the yellow triangles, we're talking about the early years of the Anastor, um, Akio Noguchi uh, dominance, as well as people like Alex Puccio and Yula Verm, approximately the same age, that kind of like uh, mid to late 80s uh, cohort. And these yellow triangles are the same people coming all the way out to here. Again, this was Anastor's big year in 20, 2013. And then this out here, this is Akio Noguchi and Alex Puccio. So this line that I'm tracing, these are the same generation of athletes. So if you're one of the best, you have a, a you know, a pretty strong uh, consistency of getting wins, whether you're young or you're old. Um, and now a new lineage starting up out down here, you're seeing the Mijos and the Yanya Garnbrets and here being Yanya's very consistent wins uh, starting what in uh in Munich 2018, and then the World Championship, and then all of 2019 there. Um, so for the winners, again, if you're one of the best, chances are you're going to stay winning for quite a while. And I would expect to see this, uh, the same thing from Yanya and Miho. For trend lines, uh, the finalists, which is the orange line, it's a little bit up and down, but, you know, approximately in that 23, 24 kind of range. 
Um, but again, with the overall participants, just like we saw with the men's, there has been a steady decline in the age of the entire field, that red line there. So in the late 2012s, early 2013s, you were seeing that average age being just over 24 years for the women. And now we're getting pretty close to being down around 22. So kind of a two-year decline in the average age of the field, even if we're not seeing that reflected in the winners or the very best athletes just yet. And then finally, we can look at the lead climbers and we'll look at men again. Again, an argument for if you are great, your age doesn't matter. Starting all the way on the left and shooting all the way up right. This is your Ramon Julien Puigblanca and then later on uh, Romain de Grange with his peak. And again, up here, 36 years old uh, in 2018. So like a late peak for Romain de Grange, right? Um, but age really didn't matter. He was sig These guys were significantly older than the average field, but when you're some of the best, it really doesn't matter. You get some great outliers. Um, and on the younger side, you've got your Adam Andre debut down here, and his line continues all the way up through here until, you know, these days here, including his win right there in uh, Brianson 2020. Um, and then I guess this bit here, this would be uh, Jakob Schubert in... 2011. Trend lines, the overall participants in purple has been pretty steady, so around 23 years old. And again, kind of like we saw in men's speed, the finalists are, are quite a bit older, especially in this 2014-2015 gap. Um, you know, the, the finalists had like a three to four year uh, age uh, gap from the, the other participants uh, in the event. Since Ramon and uh, Romain have left the scene, that kind of cohort has, has fizzled out, that gap has dropped. And now it's a little bit closer, only about a year, maybe, maybe two years difference in the last little bit. And then finally, the, uh, the folks that have been causing this whole discussion lately, women's lead. So again, finding some uh, very evident um, uh, lines here as you follow specific climbers. This would be the uh, Jane Kim, Mina, Var Mina Markovic line. Early on, you've got your Maya Vidmar and Angie Eider. Uh, and then more recently, which is probably what's gotten us talking a lot. Oh, I should look back here. This would be uh, uh, Johanna Ernst in her really, really early days. Again, someone like Chai Hun who burst onto the scene in her first year, uh, winning events in her 16 year. Um, but out here, we start to get to the Yanyas and the Jessica Pilses and then the Chai and Sos, right? And this has really been the most recent occurrence of us talking about um, climbers just getting younger and younger. And this is probably the steepest graph drop off that we've seen in any of these charts has really been within the last season. The average age of the finalists really dropped a lot in 2019. Now, that was kind of early on. It's going back up a little bit in the last couple of events, and we'll see how that evolves over the next couple seasons. Um, and that is a really short-term change. I would expect these people like Yanya and Jesse Pills, uh, and hopefully Chayun and Aimori and uh, um, uh, uh, Yutong Zhang to hopefully have the same kind of longevity that uh, Mina and Jane Kim had. So hopefully this line will continue many years into the future until they're much older. But if you look at the trend lines for the women, not that much action. Uh, the overall field, that red line, has been fairly consistent for the last, you know, like almost 10 years, right around 22 years old. While the finalists in orange has gone up a little bit in the past and then down. And like I said, just recently really plunged with that 2019 season. Um, so I, I hope that, you know, you're kind of getting a sense that things are actually fairly steady when it comes to the, uh, the ages of these athletes. There are some areas uh, of evidence of drop off, especially like we said, um, in bouldering, we saw kind of a fairly consistent pattern with the men's and the women's dropping off. I can go back really quickly uh, to those. So again, the men's participants in purple consistently dropping down by about a year, year and a half. And with the women again in the red from here about, you know, almost two years, maybe two and a half years. Um, but in general, you're seeing that average be relatively, uh, relatively consistent. And I think most of that is just because, you know, we're always going to have those young athletes come in, but the older athletes who are good and consistent, they stick around for as long as they can. 
Now, this is a really, you know, early look at ages. It doesn't really cover the distribution. There's lots of other ways to look at the statistics. This is kind of a just a first glance. And again, there's probably a lot of errors in how I um, in uh, the best way to present this kind of information. But I just wanted to give it a start and take a, just a, a quick look at how it works so you can get an idea of how things are evolving. And I, I thought it was really interesting to see a visual representation of those greatest athletes and how long they can stay in a sport and looking at their career, how they start winning when they're 16 and, you know, can end winning when they're maybe 36, like Romain de Grange did. It's nice to be involved in a sport where you can have a lot of longevity in your career and where the sport is as welcoming on a high level to 16 year olds as it is to people in their 30s. So I can only hope for more of that as time goes on. I'm very interested to see how the 2021 season turns out. It may be stunted and, you know, shrunk because of COVID. And maybe that means we're not going to pay that much attention to what these numbers look like. But in the future, I think maybe we'll get to see a little more proof if this young generation of, of female lead climbers and boulders really sticks around. If there's a continuing pattern of more younger climbers coming in, maybe that average age uh, drops off dramatically like it looks like it might, or if it just stays relatively steady like the other graphs have shown. I'm going to post all these graphs on the website, plasticweekly.com, which you may not even know existed because I haven't posted there in a long time, but I'll put it all there so you can take a look. And if you want to talk about this kind of stuff, the folks in the Plastic Weekly Discord, link below, got a chance to look at some of these graphs months ago, I think in December. So if you ever want to see stuff that's being worked on, come hang out in the Discord. If you want to support work like this, uh, you can support this channel at the Patreon with the link in the description. A special thanks to all of those uh, Patreon donors, especially to the G5. I appreciate all your support. Um, so I hope you learned a little something uh, with these charts. Hope it gave you some perspective on what the field really looks like. We're probably less than two months from, from the next World Cup. So stay excited, stay in it, everybody. Um, and we'll see you guys in the next one.